Welcome, welcome to To The Point. Uh, today, uh, it's just me today, uh, we're going to be talking about the amazing power of God. Now, there are all sorts of things we do from a, on a day-to-day -day basis, like brushing our teeth, eating our food, and the, all of these things are completely, utterly miraculous, but we take them all for granted. Now, I've called this program, Watching TV is a Miracle. I could have said dusting is a miracle, washing up is a miracle, driving a car is a miracle, or anything else, but virtually everything we do is a miracle, but we take it all for granted. So what I'm going to do now is show you uh, how God works this, um, these miracles. Uh, basically, they all work in a similar sort of way. So although I'm right now going to address watching TV as a miracle, just remember it applies to walking, standing, sitting, running, uh, kicking a football, talking, thinking, speaking. Everything we do is all miraculous, all of it. And God is a super, super scientist. There's no question about it. He's absolutely, unbelievably clever. Um, I've, got a, I've got a lot of pictures to show you, so I'm just going to whistle through the pictures. Um, and it, It's much easier to try and explain this sort of thing by showing you pictures than trying to explain it um, verbally. So if we just start with the first picture, which is just a picture of a family watching television. Now, all of us, um, we, we all get... Um, T you know, tied up with what size screen we've got and everything else, and whether it's 3D and you wear special glasses and all the rest of it. And we all think, isn't that t technology amazing? But what we forget is the technology of human beings watching television is absolutely mind-blowing. Just watch this. Watch this now. Let's go to the next slide. It says, in the beginning was the Word, where the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by Him. Nothing was made without Him. In Him was life. In Jesus Christ was life. Everything was created by Him, and He also gave life as well. Let's go to the next picture. He created the solar system. We're part of the solar system. Next picture, uh, He created all the mass, which are atoms. Uh, there's um, atoms. Um, there are lots and lots of atoms in the universe, billions and billions and billions of atoms. We're all made of atoms, and God created the atoms too. Next picture. There is a picture of an atom. Uh, just to show you just how extraordinary and miraculous it all is, there is a central nucleus, which is positively charged proton and a negative uh, a, a neutron with no charge, but around the outside are whizzing high-speed electrons with negative charges. Now, those should implode. They should actually implode so that the high-speed electrons on the outside, whizzing very fast, should implode into the positively charged protons in the same way as a north and a south mag magnet attracts. But it doesn't. And we're told in Hebrews 1, uh, that, verse 3, that the, the universe is upheld by the word of his command. Now, um, God prevents this collapse of the whole universe by the word of his command. So the fact that there is a mass at all is entirely a miracle in itself. Next picture. God said, let there be light. And when he said, let there be light, those are photons moving in a waveform. That's what a photon looks like. They're subatomic particles. Um, when God said, next picture, uh, let there be light, uh, we know through Einstein's law of relativity that energy equals mass times the square of the speed of light. Now, originally, God created the mass, uh, but when he said, let there be light, he created light, which at the same time created speed, which is a measure of time, and also energy. So that's when God created light and energy. And in our universe, uh, we have the source of all the energy, which is the sun. And let me tell you, the sun um, is the only place in the universe where nuclear uh, fusion happens, which is something totally, utterly miraculous. Just concentrate on that sun just for a second. We're very, we look at the sun and think, gosh, isn't that amazing? It is truly fantastic. Uh, if you look back to me just for a second, every second, 700,000 tonnes of hydrogen are converted into helium with 100% efficiency, um, giving off all the energy for our universe. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, now we have, um, I think I've got a picture to show you, we have power stations and they are 
by comparison, virtually useless. Um, they use another technology called nuclear fission. Now, nuclear fission is, uh, was first discovered in 1945 when uh, Big Boy, the atomic bombs, were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, they are highly inefficient. One of the problems with nuclear power stations is they give off atomic, they leave behind a residue called atomic waste. And they don't know what to do with it. Um, they got this radioactive uranium depleted, so they put it into concrete uh, barrels and put it at the bottom of the sea, and they just hope. <laughs> they hope that um, it won't leak out uh, anytime soon. I don't know what's going to happen but with all that, but there have been nuclear disasters already. We needn't go down that route. Right, what actually happens in the sun, next picture, is nuclear fusion. That's the next picture of... Um, four hydrogen atoms being converted into a helium atom with 100% efficiency, giving off masses and masses of energy. Um, if you just come back to me now, the point, the, the point is that in order for me to watch television, for you to watch television, for me to, to wiggle my fingers like that, or anything else requires basically various things. It requires energy, it requires oxygen, and it requires food. Those are basic requirements. So I'm showing you how God gets energy into our bodies so that we can um, watch television or wiggle our fingers or eat our food or hear or listen or speak or bicycle or anything else. And it all starts in the sun with this amazing thing called nuclear fusion. Right, next picture. When, when, the nec when nuclear fusion happens, uh, what, what, what it produces is lots and lots of um, energy uh, radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, and in particular that we're aware of, uh, visible light in seven colours. It's seven colours, but next picture. We are familiar with a rainbow, which is made of seven colours, because God is a God of sevens. Seven days in the week, seven numbers. Uh, seven days in the week, um, seven notes in music, in an octave in music. Um, and seven colours in the rainbow and seven throughout scriptures, and that's why there are seven colours in the rainbow. We're familiar with visible light, but here is miracle, the next miracle now. If you look at the next picture, I told you that some of those rays were very dangerous. They're, ultra, they're gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, all sorts of nasty rays, which actually would damage our DNA, our deoxyribonucleic acid, which is the genetic code in each of our cells. So God has put a protective layer around, our, around the earth to prevent those damaging rays getting to our bodies. So that is a miracle. We take it all for granted, but it is a miracle because if that protective zone up in the stratosphere wasn't there, we would all be dead because if you, if you radiate DNA with uh, gamma rays, guess what happens? You get modified DNA, DNA and you've got cancer. That's what happens and you die. It's all a miracle. Everything you see around us is a miracle. Now, what happens when uh, the light comes to planet Earth? The next miracle happens is photosynthesis. If you look at the next picture now, it's a picture of plants and leaves. Jolly good. Super. Now we look at, out at the, the, the greenery around us, the trees, the grass, the flowers, the plants, the shrubs and everything else and think, well, they're pretty. Well, they are pretty, but they're factories. They're God's factories for making food for us. That's exactly what they are. They are factories. They're very pretty factories and very beautiful factories, but they are factories. And those uh, plants, all of them, they have something which none of us can do. Uh, they trap sunlight and convert a carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and food. Now, um, we try to do that with our um, photoelectric cells, which we put on top of roofs to catch the sunlight, and they are only 15% efficient. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm talking about, the, the, the the photoelectric cells which we put on people's roofs to make electricity, they're only 15% efficient. Plants are 100% efficient. That's how efficient plants are. Let's move on and see how the plants do it. Well, they do it using a process called photosynthesis, which is totally, utterly, amazingly miraculous. In the presence of sunlight, uh, within the plants is a something called chlorophyll, which you've probably heard of, uh, and 
water and carbon dioxide is converted into oxygen for us because we need oxygen and food. In fact, without all the plants around, we wouldn't be able to live at all because uh, there wouldn't be any oxygen and there wouldn't be any food. What's more, we breathe out carbon dioxide as a waste product. And guess what? That's exactly what all the plants love. So God has created planet Earth with a, a symbiotic uh, process with human beings and animals and fish and birds and all living creatures breathing oxygen, but all the plants breathing in carbon dioxide and breathing out oxygen for us and all the animals and the plants and all the animals and the, and the birds and the fish, but also creating food for all of us. It's a complete miracle. Now that is a next picture, a rather complicated picture of um, photosynthesis again. We need to look at, oh, we've gone too far. Can we go back one? Sorry, there we are. That's the next picture. Um, now there is light and dark photosynthesis. Um, we, we needn't go into all the details right now. In fact, we haven't got, possibly got time. But let me tell you that photosynthesis is an unbelievably complicated. There's no way it could ever have happened by chance. It's one of the most miraculous and amazing uh, pieces of uh, biochemistry in the universe. Absolutely fantastic. And not a chance at all that could, that could ever have happened by chance. Next picture. So now we get to our human body. And in order for us to watch television, God has got to get, um, not got to, God has designed and planned the oxygen and the food to get into our bodies. So we're going to look now, first of all, at our lungs. And the oxygen comes in the air into our lungs into, on the right, little sacs called alveoli. Now let me tell you that surf the, um, the, the, your lungs are about the same size as two tennis courts. And those uh, alveoli on the right, they would co collapse completely if there wasn't a special surfactant, a special chemical in them to prevent them collapsing. That is what a genius God is. Next picture. The oxygen um, is moved into the cells uh, and binds with haemoglobin. You've probably heard of haemoglobin. Some of you have had your blood test and had your haemoglobin measured by your doctor. Now, haemoglobin is a totally, totally miraculous um, molecule. It's got iron in it, which is toxic for us, uh, but God doesn't permit it to become toxic because it's just there in exactly the right amount. And basically, this amazing haemoglobin, which we cannot manufacture, um, collects oxygen and, and, and takes it to all the different parts of our body. Next part, next one, is a picture of the circulatory system. That's the next picture. This is a highly, highly complicated uh, blood system in which uh, God moves the hemoglobin around the body using a special uh, pump called a heart with four valves in it. Very, very complex uh, piece of machinery. And uh, all of our body, all the living tissues in our body require oxygen. In fact, the brain uses 20% um, of the available energy. Let's look at the next picture. The next picture is a human brain and uses 20% of the energy in terms of food and oxygen that is used by the whole of the body, human body. So um, if, you, uh, if you cut off, if you have a heart attack, um, basically you will lose consciousness very quickly if your heart stops pumping blood. In fact, if, you, if the brain stops receiving blood, that br you'll become unconscious within four seconds. That's how sensitive your brain is to having regular oxygen. Uh, next picture. The next thing that uh, God has designed is our intestines to uh, get the food from the plants and also the animals, because the animals eat the plants, um, into our blood via our intestines. Now there you can see a picture of the stomach and the large intestine and the small intestine. Um, you're familiar with probably with how food is moved through the body. But um, the, the, within the stomach, the stomach has a pH of 2, which is about the same acidity as um, battery, car battery acid, very, very acid to kill all the nasty bacteria, viruses, fungi, and all the other nasty things that come into our stomach. It's all killed dead almost straight away and broken down into, li into little packages uh, suitable to be broken down. And let's look at the next picture 
which is a picture of the stomach with the pancreas right underneath it. And the pancreas has a very important function. The pancreas produces insulin, and I expect some of you have heard of insulin in the terms of diabetics. Well, insulin is a very, very important hormone which, which, makes, uh, which causes bl uh, sugar, blood glucose, to go into the cells. Now, what is not widely appreciated is that the blood sugar level is terribly, terribly important. If it goes too high or too low, we will get very, very ill. I used to be a medical doctor, some of you may know that. I used to run a, a diabetic clinic and looked after 300 diabetics. And the blood sugar level, it has to be between very, very narrow limits. If it goes too low, uh, you lose consciousness and start fitting. If it goes too high, you've got diabetes. Um, it has to be monitored, but in most people, um, it's, uh, for, unless they become unwell with diabetes, it is, the blood sugar is monitored very, very finely by the insulin produced by the pancreas. The whole process is totally miraculous. There's no way at all it could have evolved by chance, because it's got to be perfect immediately. Otherwise, the blood sugar will be... Uh, incorrect and the body would die instantly. So evolution is rubbish. I've said it on, the, on this program before. Evolution is complete and utter rubbish. Next picture. When the uh, food and the oxygen get into the cells, it gets into the power factories of the cells called the mitochondria. And we, here we have the complete miracle of the Krebs cycle. That's the next picture. All medical students, uh, I went to medical school when I was 17, but all medical, all medical students have to learn the, what's called the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. We had to reproduce this during our uh, finals for the uh, physiology and biochemistry parts of the uh, medical course. Um, basically, it's what happens within each one of our 100 trillion cells in order to make energy. I'm not even going to attempt right now to explain it all to to. The only point I want to make to you is it is totally, absolutely incredible and totally, totally supernatural. Absolutely super, supernatural. There's absolutely no way that could have evolved by chance. No way at all. Now, how do we listen to the television and hear the television? Well, first of all, we'll start with our hearing. You're familiar with uh, your, your little trumpets on two, two sides, so you can have stereoscopic um, hearing. Uh, those ears are carefully funneled so that the um, sound waves are compressed into your external auditory meatus. Next one. Actually, what is sound? Well, sound actually is compressed air which vibrates. Um, it's a longitudinal wave, if you like. As we speak, we compress the air. Uh, next one. Um, you're probably familiar with a tuning fork. Um, if you... Uh, there are two little tines of a tuning fork. If you were to uh, tap a tuning fork on a, on, on a table, it would, it would actually cause compression of the sound waves, as you can see on the bottom there. And that's exactly what sound is. It's compression of the air. Um, next one, please. So when a young lad in the next picture uh, sh shouts something, what is actually happening is, again, totally miraculous, using his lungs, his larynx, uh, his, um, his, his mouth, his uh, pharynx, uh, his teeth and his lips. He gives off sound in lots of different frequencies. And that's what sound is and causes vibrations in lots of different frequencies in the air around him. Next one. Uh, that is God's, uh, that is picked up, that sound, that variation in the compression of the air is picked up by God's miracle called the human ear. There are three parts of it, the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. Next one. The outer ear is specially designed like a trumpet to uh, get the sounds funneled into the middle ear. Uh, next one is a picture of the um, the eardrum, which is just like a drum, but it's very, very uh, highly more specialised than a drum. It's very sophisticated as the eardrum to pick up all the amplitudes and different sound waves. In the middle ear, which is the next picture, um, it's connected to the eustachian tube. Your ear is connected to the back of your nose by a special uh, canal called the eustachian canal to keep the temperature the same, otherwise your hearing wouldn't work at all. 
Uh, next one. In your middle ear, you've got three tiny little bones called ossicles. They're the smallest bones in your body, and they have a particular function. Then in the next picture, uh, what they do is they, uh, they act like um, levers and increase, uh, like a lever, the amplitude and variation of amplitude of the sound waves times 20. That's what they do. And the variation of uh, sound waves is transmitted to the inner ear uh, so that it can be collected by the next picture what's called the cochlea. That's on the left there, looks like a snail. That's why I call it a cochlea, which is Latin for a snail. And within that uh, cochlea is the basilar membrane. Next one. is that That's the nerve inside your ear, which picks up all the variations in sound. Next one. Along the basilar membrane are lots of little cells. They're called hair cells of different lengths. And they work just like, the, in that picture there, they work just like um, a harp. So a particular frequency will cause a different uh, hair cell to vibrate. And next picture, those um, sounds are taken uh, by the auditory nerve to the, to the brain. Next picture. The next picture is a gyroscope because your ears, you actually balance with your ears. And that's really important. Even when you're watching television, that's really important to keep your head still. Next one. Uh, the next picture is to show you what the, uh, the balanced part of your ear looks like. It's three semicircular canals. It's totally miraculous. There's no way it could possibly have evolved by chance. Next picture. And these uh, stimuli, uh, electrical stimuli, all taken to the brain with the, um, the electrical stimuli uh, from the eye. And we're just going to briefly look at the eye now. Next picture. Actually, those are neurons. Um, these are nerves, specialized nerve in your brain, and impulses travel along the nerve cells at 250 miles a, a second. Really, really fast. It's super, super computer stuff, this is. Uh, next picture. There is a bank of NASA supercomputers. Let me tell you that your human brain is vastly, vastly more complicated than a whole, any, any number of NASA supercomputers. Next one. All of these cells are designed by God using our DNA, our deoxyribonucleic acid, using the genetic code in all of our 100 trillion cells. Now we just lastly come to our eyes, which are miracles. There's no question they are miracles. What they do is they collect light. Next one, we'll look, we, uh, light in seven colors, comes to our eyes. Next picture, light is actually photons moving in a waveform created by God. And, there, and there's the next picture. There is an eye which is moved around by those muscles, as you can see on the outside. Your, your eyes actually scan everything at about a thousand times a second. They're far more sophisticated than any camera you've ever seen. Next picture. There is a picture of an, an, a camera on the left and, the, and, a, and a human eye on the right. The one on the left is something like out of, out of, the, out of a Stone Age or something. The one on the right is the most sophisticated camera the world has ever seen. It's unbelievably complicated. Uh, there is a picture of a human eye. I unfortunately haven't got time to explain it all in detail. Next one. The eye keeps itself clean with, with special windscreen wipers. Next one, please. And the rays from that bicycle on the left are converged upside down on the retina or the back of the eye on the right-hand side of that picture. Next one. So when we look at a car, the images are converted electronically in the back of the eye and the rods and the cones to the brain. Next one. There is the back of the eye. Absolutely amazing. Totally amazing. Next one. Those are, those are the rods and the cones. And they electronically convert um, light waves into electrical impulses. Now, if you just look at me now, what you've just been looking at is a very, very simplified uh, example of exactly how we can watch television. It is unbelievably complicated. Um, we take it all for granted, but can you see that it all started with nuclear fusion in the sun, it then moved on to the photosynthesis in the leaves, it then moved into our hemoglobin in our cells, it then moved to our brain. All amazingly complicated. 
Everything you see around you is totally, absolutely supernatural. Everything is created by God. Every single thing we do say, everything we think, it's all using um, highly sophisticated um, chemistry, biochemistry and chemistry, all created by God. Thanks for joining me on To The Point. Do write to us at To The Point at Revelation TV. We look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you now and see you again soon.